Tag Heuer is one of the most recognized watch brands in the world. But even with all that heritage and history, it's fallen out of favor with enthusiasts in recent years. That may have changed this year with the release of the new 39mm Carrera glass box. It might even be the best watch Tag has released in years. But does it live up to all the hype? I'm here in Atlanta this week to visit a friend, and while I'm here, I figured I'd take out the new Carrera glass box for a week on the wrist. Hoyer's connection to motorsports dates to the early 1900s, when it was among the first brands to make wristwatch chronographs, offered alongside its car dash timers and pocket watch timers and chronographs. In 1963, Hoyer introduced the Carrera. Jack Hoyer, the great-grandson of the company's founder, designed the clean three-register chronograph as a tool for motorsports enthusiasts and racers, with maximum legibility in mind. He named his design after the Carrera Pan Americana, a grueling, thousand mile plus race across Mexico that only ran for four years because it was so intense. In short, it was a sports chronograph, but about as clean and elegant as they come. Personally, it's always been a favorite of the classic vintage chronographs of mine. I've owned a few over the years. They wear better on my wrist than a lot of other classic chronographs, and the design is about as pure as it gets, with nothing superfluous. This could also just be because they're typically less expensive than vintage Daytonas or Speedmasters. This brings us to the introduction of the new 39mm Carrera glass box at Watches and Wonders this year. It was introduced in two variations, the black dial, which I have here, and a more modern looking blue dial variation. I'm focusing on the black dial because I like it a little bit more. It's a little bit more vintage inspired compared to the blue dial. The new glass box Carrera measures 39 millimeters in diameter and has a relatively compact lug to lug of 46 millimeters. It's 14 millimeters thick, and while I do have some critiques about the dimensions, it's not on the thickness. It wears relatively well on the wrist. It also has 100 meters of water resistance, pump pushers, and both variations have a date. On the black dial, it's at 12 o'clock, while on the blue dial, it's flipped at 6 o'clock. The watch gets its name from the large crystal. It's a bezel-less construction, so the sapphire crystal goes straight into the case. It's a really cool effect. It's meant to call to mind the vintage acrylic crystals on vintage Carreras, but here it's a totally modern thing. It's really accented by the sloped dial, so the tachymeter sits above, and then the subdials are even inset, so you get a really layered feeling to the dial. When you slope it or view it at an angle, you actually kind of, it, it fills up the dial, which is actually really cool. The design is clean, elegant, it's heritage inspired, but it's not trying too hard. There's a lot of little vintage touches I like too. Take the hands for example. There's a black strip down the middle. It, it calls to mind the second generation of 2447s from the 60s. Even the font on the subdials, the Swiss signature at six o'clock feels vintage inspired and right at home with those original Carreras. The dial is really multi-dimensional. The subdials sit lower than the main dial, and then there's that slope out to the tachymeter. When you look at it at an angle, it really fills up that glass box. I like the strap. It's really, it's comfy and padded. It calls to mind the vintage racing straps, of course, the original inspiration of the Carrera. It'll be interesting to see how it wears because it's so comfy and soft. When I put it on, it feels a little bit like cosplay because of the, the racing inspiration of it. Uh, it's my Andretti watch, as a friend put it to me the other day. But I don't mind it. I'm from Indianapolis, so a little Andretti is in me, I think. The movement is the Tag Heuer Caliber TH20-00. It's basically a new version of the Tag Heuer Caliber 2, which is a pretty good vertical clutch column wheel chronograph, especially at this price point to have a in-house movement like that is pretty impressive. It's got 80 hours of power reserve, which is also really good and practical. The thing is it has pretty industrial movement finishing, which you can see through the Sapphire case back. It's something I'm not necessarily sure I would put on display, especially for a watch that is kind of geared at enthusiasts or hardcore vintage lovers. Besides that, the feel of the chronograph is accurate and satisfying. There's a nice play in the chronograph pushers when you engage the chronograph. It could be a little bit smoother, but other than that, absolutely no complaints. 
That brings us to some of the cons of the new glass box, at least as far as I see it. First, we've got to talk about the date window placement, right? On the black dial version that I've been wearing around Atlanta all week, it sits at 12 o'clock on the dial. There's the obvious issue here. When the chronograph hand is zeroed out, it sits behind that hand and it can be a little bit difficult to read. Funny enough, this is also like the original vintage Hoyer Dados that introduced a date window at 12 o'clock, but they were only produced for a year or two before Hoyer realized the exact same issue. You couldn't read the date that well when the chronograph hand was zeroed out. So Hoyer moved the date on the Dado to nine o'clock, something you'll recognize in the Hodinkee Dado limited edition that we've done. The new Glassbox Carrera costs $6,450 for either the blue or the black dial. Before we talk about that a little bit more, let's look at some of the competition. Perhaps the most obvious comparison is the Speedmaster Moonwatch. With a Hezolite crystal, it's $7,000 on bracelet. You can also find a Black Bay Chronograph for $5,500. More expensive, you'll find something like the IWC Big Pilot at $7,600 before you get to more expensive chronographs from brands like Zenith and of course Rolex. So when you look at the entire competition and its landscape, you start to realize that the $6,400 price point of the Tag Heuer Carrera kind of fits into where it should be. It's expensive, sure, and of the watches I'm listing off, none of them have the clean, classic, design-driven inspiration that the Glassbox Carrera has. So if that's what you're looking for, it's hard to think of any direct competitors. I know some vintage enthusiasts are always craving that Hoyer only logo, but to me, I like that they put Tag Hoyer on the dial instead of just the Hoyer signature. These are the types of watches that Tag Hoyer should be making. It draws on their heritage, but it's not trying too hard. 39 millimeters, it's the best Carrera dimensions we've had in a while. It feels a little short on the lugs. It loses some of the elegance of the original Carrera that had those long polished lugs but it still wears really nice on my wrist. 14 millimeters, sure it's thick, but it's manageable. It, it slips under my shirt nicely. A week ago, I asked the question, is this really the best Tag Heuer in years? After a week of wearing it around Atlanta, I'm pretty confident in saying that it is. Not just because of what this watch is, along with the blue dial and the skipper that uses the same platform. They're great additions to the Tag Heuer catalog. But what I'm more excited about is what it says about the direction of Tag Heuer. It's vintage and heritage inspired, but it's not overly done. It's a modern take on classic watchmaking, and that's something I can always get behind. 